Hey guys, what's up? This is Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time greeting you. This short tutorial is going to be about the windsurfer antennas that I assembled yesterday. And uh, the following range test video is not about the maximum distance the Phantom 3 can travel. I'm sure that you could cover longer distances without a problem under the right circumstances. This video is an FPV and not a remote control signal test. I'll be flying the Phantom 3 out in a straight line without the windsurfer antennas attached and mark the distance from the home point as soon as the FPV signal gets lost. And after that I'll return and take off again. I'll be flying the same route but this time with the windsurfer antennas attached to the remote control. And now it gets interesting. Is the FPV signal with the windsurfer antennas attached going to last longer than without them? Maybe the signal's gonna last 100 meters longer or 200 meters or even 800 meters or more? Let's just take it to the test. You can't go wrong with a tool that costs you about two or three dollars to assemble only. And at the end of this tutorial, you can click at a link that redirects you to my instructions video on how to build yourself a windsurf antenna for your multi-rotor. Next to that, I added the link into the description of this video. Now stay tuned and don't forget to click at the subscribe button while the astronaut dances. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, first take off without the windsurfer antennas attached. Let's just raise the copter up onto 42 meters and then depart. But now let's just speed that process up. We don't have in forever. Now there are already a couple of trees in between the remote control and the copter and I was sitting on the ground to get things even more complicated. Okay, let's pause it right here and set a mark. First flight without windsurf antennas, only 954 meters. Again, that doesn't mean anything until we don't know the results with the windsurfers. <laughs> Let's now start the Phantom again, but this time with the windsurfer antennas attached to the remote control. Take off, rising up to 42 meters height, and again, off we go. And again, let's speed this process up. I remember me being super curious at the ground if I could reach a better distance with the self-made windsurfer antennas attached. Okay, pause and mark right here. About 1261 meters. Now let's just take a look at both numbers. 954 versus 1261 meters. The difference is... 307 meters. This is actually a good value if we remember flights with our Phantom 2 copters, but I thought I could get better results and decided to head for a second test. Okay, new flight, new chance. The first take off again without the windsurfer antennas attached. This time I was standing in an upright position flying in a different direction. Again I climbed up onto 42 meters height and then departed. When I reached 1000 meters I tried to be fair and lifted the copter up onto 70 meters height. Let's just pause and set a mark right here, about 1219 meters. That's almost as far as with the windsurfer antennas attached during the first test. But before we say they don't make a difference, I restarted the copter, attached the windsurf antennas to the remote control and took off again.
Again, I set the height to be about 42 meters and off I went. I easily hit the 1000 meters and then lifted up the copter onto 70 meters as well. Same conditions. Right now we are pretty much at the same distance than without the wind server antennas attached. But still, we didn't have a loss of the video downlink signal. At incredible 2,653 meters, the video downlink still didn't show a sign of weakness, but I had to return due to the low battery level. I could have easily increased the distance. In total, the difference on the second flight was enormous, 1,219 meters versus 2,653 meters. This means that I was able to fly more than two times the distance with the wind surfer antennas attached, 1,434 meters difference being exact. And we remember too, that I didn't have a signal loss and had to return due to the low battery level only. And because I'm a very conservative pilot, and maybe that's the reason why I never experienced a flyaway or seriously crashed my Phantom, I never even broke a propeller, that's why I had to return my Phantom at that point and finally couldn't find out what the maximum distance was on this flight. And I don't want to take risks I cannot control, and I would recommend anybody out there doing the same. Don't take risks you cannot control. But back to the topic, let's just face it, with the wind server antennas attached, the signal lasted way longer. And when there is a free tool you can assemble yourself with items that can be found in each and every normal household, this is definitely rockin' crazy. Would I recommend flying with the wind server antennas attached? Yes, I would. Try it yourself and report on how it behaved within my Facebook group. I would be super curious to listen to what you have experienced with the wind servers attached. The link is www.facebook.com slash groups slash Tom's I would be glad to meet you there. Click at the link popping up right now to get to watch the how to assemble video and download the free template. If you can click the link, I added it to the description of this video as well. Please be awesome and leave a donation so I can keep up the work and produce many more super interesting tutorials, how to's and test videos. www.tomstechtime.com slash donate. Thanks a lot. Please subscribe and leave a thumb up. And finally, stay tuned and conservative young pilots. This was Tom from TDD Dom's Tech Time over and out.